Greetings, and welcome to episode 67. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the environment, but not what you think, not like uh, an eco-warrior protecting the environment. What I mean is your immediate environment, the things that you interact with on a daily basis, and how they affect you as a person and your personal growth. <clears throat> so, if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the environment, or more to the point, your environment, because your environment might not be the same as my environment. Even if we live in the same place, we could live all live in the same apartment building and still our perception of our environment creates our environment, has a lot to do with our environment. If you don't perceive your environment as something negative, you're going to take something different from it than, say, somebody else. If, or even if you do perceive your immediate environment as something negative, but you're okay with that, you're still going to get a different experience out of that than somebody, like, say, this group of people, they see their environment as negative, and they're not okay with it. These people over here see their environment as either positive or doesn't matter could go either way but they're not bothered by it they're both groups of people are going to have a different experience even though they live at the same apartment complex now take it a little bit further what about the people that thrive in a negative environment so they don't see anything wrong with it the only people that are going to see anything wrong with it are those that a negative environment would have a detrimental effect on so it's it's all in your perception of this oh. anyway the reason I bring this up is because I've been I've been noticing a few things lately and a few things have been brought to my attention that a creature is a product of its environment which is true to an extent but what can be changed within that is not you cannot let your environment affect you you have that ability to override that victim response to the world which is like what do they say oh your life is completely controlled by your genes and now they're starting to say oh it's not it's your environment oh and then it's gonna be for years it's gonna be oh your life is completely controlled by your environment but it's not because look at all the people that had a very crappy start in a very bad environment but made it to a position in life that most people would consider desirable be it uh, a leader in business a leader in politics or just started doing well for himself but stayed you know not too high but wasn't down at the bottom where he started uh, regardless we're gonna start seeing that environment also plays very little role in how well you do or don't do but to people that are sensitive to those things, let's break down what your environment is. And then we'll get back into the discussion of environment controlling. So let's break it down. People that are sensitive, which is most people, to their environment, uh, where you live, the condition of where you live, i.e., is it a run-down neighborhood I mean, there are poor neighborhoods that aren't exactly run down. They're just poor neighborhoods. Then there's poor neighborhoods that are run down. Then there's just the poor neighborhoods that are full of crime. And then you have even decent neighborhoods that are full of crime. <clears throat> okay, so that's, that's the visual representation of your environment. When you walk out of the door, what do you see? Do you see poor run-down buildings, poor run-down houses? Is that what you see? Is this, is this your immediate environment? If so, <clears throat> that's probably going to have the most profound effect on your perception of your environment. But say you walk outside and 
it's not the best area but it doesn't look all run down you might it might it, it could be argued that you would have a better time or an easier time getting up where you want or need to be so yeah <laughs> But when you get into a discussion about it, what you are really getting into is, I don't want to see you're laying blame, and I don't want to lay blame on people that are actually victimized by this, but you're playing a victim. You're saying that, I'm relieving myself of responsibility due to these factors which and until you realize that it is just an excuse that you're just sidestepping the responsibility when you when you realize that then you can no longer do that but until you realize that that's what you do that's what you're going to do you're gonna say well I'm never gonna because of this and because you've got all these statistics to back up your own belief system that people that start out from here rarely ever make anything of them of their lives or of themselves and so that's starting with a really a pretty decent deficit is what you're starting with at that point but once you've come to the conclusion that these factors don't have to have any effect on my journey whatsoever. All it is is a perception. If you change your perception, yes, I live here. Yes, it, it could be better, but it could be worse. And I'm not going to use that as an excuse for not performing whatever action. Either making the area better or getting up out of that area or uh, focusing on... Uh, a career path that puts you on a different economic level and I'm not even trying to discuss this in terms of ec economics uh, most people that I've seen I mean I'm 40 years old and I've lived in a lot of places I've lived in really nice neighborhoods I've real, lived in really shitty neighborhoods and what I can tell you is the people in the really shitty neighborhoods nine times out of ten or what we'll say is what I'll say is ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time is what I'm gonna say the people in the really shitty neighborhoods are so geared towards survival they don't have time to worry about the mind or the spirit or what's out there beyond the stars or what's inside beyond the mind or any of that the only thing they're worried about is how the bills are gonna get paid how the how the food's gonna get on the table that's all they're worried about until you recognize that these are just excuses well what else am I supposed to do whatever you want just because you live here does not preclude you from going out and getting a better job or going out and getting the training to get a better job there's the, the only thing that's stopping you from that is you saying Oh, I could never because I, whatever reason. It's just an excuse. Once you realize this, you can't say that anymore. Likewise, another part of the environment that people take for granted is people are worried about, oh, the buildings, the buildings, look at the shitty area, there's graffiti everywhere and burned out cars or whatever. What about the people? They also make up your environment. It is an actual physical part you interact with is these people you see them and uh, uh, rather than just having this visual representation affecting your emotional state you've got people that can actually speak to you and affect your emotional state on top of seeing them you see them and they're not dressed uh, very well and they don't carry themselves very well and they don't speak very well it, and now you're interacting with these people so it's just reinforcing the whole this is the slum and nobody ever gets out of the slum and if they do it's because they became a better criminal it just reinforces that 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 overactive survival mode that most people find themselves in and don't get me wrong that survival mode is at every level 
it's just worse at the bottom because the further you go up, the less you're concerned with eating and having a roof over your head. Now you're concerned with uh, now you're concerned with I gotta have stuff. I gotta have the, all the stuff I want to make getting this far worth it. I mean, nobody wants to go out and spend 12 years in college to go out and get that kick-ass job and then live in a shack somewhere and not get what they perceive to be the benefits of all that hard work, which most people perceive the benefits to be, oh, that BMW or that Mercedes and the, and the, the, the 15 bedroom house, and you know, the trophy wife or, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and that's, and that, that's also a perception. I mean, when you interact with these people, The reason why it reinforces, rather than just seeing the buildings, the reason why it reinforces the perception of, of slums equals poverty equals never going to get anywhere is because these people are telling you, they're telling you, oh, nothing ever good comes out of here. You know, oh, I got to make my rent. Oh, how am I going to make my rent? And here's the funny thing. You could get out of the slums. You could get out of the bad neighborhoods. You could get out of the, I mean, even if it's a decent neighborhood, you can get out of that neighborhood that's infested with crime and still have negative people around you telling you, you can't, you can't, you'll never, you'll never. And it'll have just as detrimental of, uh, of an effect. It'll have just as negative, I should say, of an effect as being smack dab in the middle of the slums with all the the negative visuals and maybe you don't talk to anybody so now you're up a little you're you, you've gone a couple of steps up out of the slums but now you're surrounded by negative people oh you'll never because well what's your proof because we never but that's a choice to not <laughs> if you're not gonna try you go and don't tell me I'm not going to make it because you're not willing to try. It's almost as though misery loves company. We don't want you to get up out of the ghetto or out of the slums because we're not going to put forth any effort to get up out of the slums and we kind of like you here. Or we'd be jealous if we knew someone that actually got up and made it. Huh. Well, that's the way it works. Sometimes your environment isn't exactly the physical location you then happen to be standing in or living in. Sometimes it's the people that you choose to have in your life. Because you can live in the richest neighborhood and have shitty people around you that ha cause you to make uh, less than ideal decisions, we'll say. Because they're whispering, hey, try this, do this, do this, do that, do this. Oh, you could never. What would you do without me? Well, obviously, I'd be further down the road. <laughs> and that's a very real circumstance. I think most of what holds people back in any given area is less about the physical environment, i.e. the visual scenery, and more about the people that live in that area. Because, sir, you live in the slums, but say everybody's hopeful that they're going to get up and out. And people are trying their hardest to get up and out. And every, it's everybody. It's not just the every so often you'll get a bright spot that's trying to lift up out of the, out of the gloom. But, I mean, everybody's trying to be that bright spot to lift up out of the gloom and make their area a, a viable place to live that doesn't look or feel like the slums and everybody's in on that so then what so then suddenly it's not the scenery it's directly related to the people that you choose to have in your life so you can find those positive people in the slums or in the ghetto you can find those people that have a mind to get in, get in the hell out of that situation the same thing goes for spiritual and mental matters. All oh, that stuff's not real. You're just wasting your time. How are you going to use that to pay the rent? Who says I got to use it to pay the rent? Who says I got to use it to pay the rent? 
And I'll be the first one to admit, having integrity, even in the upper levels, is not really a good quality to have if you have a mind toward making money. Because they want you to be able to bend and flex as they see fit. As they need you, they need you to have less and less and less and less and less and less integrity until there's nothing there but what they want out of you. But for that, you get more often than not, you get more and more benefit from it and like increased wages uh, perks benefits this and that and the other but make no mistake it's still all a perception now scenery is even easy 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 to overcome scenery is very easy to overcome just see it differently because you could walk into a slum and see the potential there. You know, I, I see a vision of this place in a better state. And maybe it'll never be there, but just hold that vision in your head of there's, there's all that potential that's there. And boom, you've now overcome the scenery aspect. Now, how do you overcome the people? You either leave the area or stop interacting with those people. Because... The more you are in opposition to the status quo, it is less likely that you're going to turn these people toward, a, toward something better than it is that they'll turn you to their way of thinking. Now, there are exceptions to every rule. There are those that will, despite opposition, will still start keep fighting for what they perceive to be a better life, a better way of life. But what usually ends up happening is the rest of the people don't appreciate that. That's not what they're after. They're just after to pay their bills. You're trying to better yourself and maybe and, and probably trying to take some people with you. But all they see is the struggle, and you got to get the bills paid, and rent, and food, and you know what I mean? That's all they see, so that's all they experience. But your experience is different, because your perception is different. Your perception isn't based on the scenery. Your perception isn't based on the negative people naysaying every one of your decisions. It's based on the potential that you see ahead of you. You see, you see the potential that you could possibly do X thing. You see the potential that this place could possibly become X thing. So you're working and living according to that perception. But it makes no difference because <clears throat> say you take a piece of your environment with you either by choice or against their wishes say uh, you've decided that you're gonna rescue one of these people hey come with me and you finally talk them into coming with you if they aren't really if their hearts not really into that change if their perception is still towards good or bad good area bad area rich poor survival if they if they leave that area with that overblown sense of survival they're going to go to that new place with that still have that overblown survival instinct and they're going to live according to that you didn't have that overblown survival instinct you had a mind more geared toward personal personal evolution we'll say and maybe not becoming uh, an enlightened being, but maybe just bettering yourself on as many levels of yourself as you could. But it has been my experience that if you hold on to those old connections that either didn't see it when you saw it, that it's time to change, or had no intentions of ever changing, if you keep those people around, they can either A, drag you back to square one, or B, change your mind from ever leaving square one. Because you have to remember, these things 
are ingrained in their subconscious mind that they're never going to make it. And the only way to make it is to have this overblown survival instinct where I will take down anybody in my path, friend, foe, family, doesn't matter. The, the three F's, friends, foes, and family. <laughs> and they do. They do. I've been screwed over more than once by family members. More than once. And people say, well, how come you don't hang out with your family? Well, <laughs> once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> uh, if they don't get what they want out of you, they have nothing but bad things to say about you. And why would I want people like that in my life? Well, you think you're bad. I don't think I'm better than you. I just know what I want in my life. And it's not people that are just going to sit there and tear me down to make themselves look or feel better. I'm not here to cater to your neurotic behavior. If you don't feel good about yourself, that's not my problem. <laughs> now, I help you as far as I can, but as soon as helping you starts ruining some part of me, I'm done. <laughs> so, it's not going to happen. I didn't get as far as I got in my life. By bringing the people with me that caused me to want to stay at square one in the first place, to never leave square one. Because I used to be one of those people that was, I'm at, I'm at square one, I'm never going to leave square one. So I better get used to it. But I didn't have a mind for square one. To stay in the shit and be in the shit and overblown survival instinct. I, I didn't have that mindset to stay at square one. So when square two became apparent. And see, mind you, living in those areas, the, the slums and the ghettos and living in those areas. Didn't make me feel as though advancement wasn't an option. And so when it came time to change and move on, I changed and moved on. But it took a long time. It took a long time of, no, I can't, I can't, I can't leave my friends behind. But once you move on, you start to see that you'll either make new friends or you'll develop what I've developed, which is an aversion to making new friends, where I'm nice to people, but I don't try to invite a lot of people into my life. Because you never know. Oh, what do I always say? I always say, this is quoting myself, you never know someone until you know someone, and then it's too late. I've run into far too many people that I let in, you know, you, the people you let into the inner sanctum, and then they show their true colors, but by the time they show their true colors, it's too late. The damage is done. So, I don't let anybody in. And you can show your true colors all you want. You're going to do surface damage at best, and not so much surface damage that I can't bounce back from it. So, I limit my environment. My environment is limited to just the visual representation of the environment, the scenery. That is all my environment is limited to. I don't have a bunch of people in my immediate life that have a say in what goes on in my life, that control the comings and goings of me, my ideas, if I want to get to the next space, you know, I started at square one. Now, I can't tell you what square I'm on now, but I can tell you I'm pretty far away from square one. So if I want to get on to the next square, there's nobody in my life telling me, oh, no, stay here. It's safe here. Nobody. And I feel the, the, the drive I feel in overdrive isn't the survival instinct. 
it's an instinct to change myself to become a better version of myself on a daily basis and granted I'm human and I make mistakes uh, times when I was angry when I maybe shouldn't have been angry times where a little kindness would have changed the situation but you don't realize that until the situation's already been in the past so I can't change those also situations where someone is crappy to you and you you experience it so negatively that you you know you su they're suffering and you suffer with them and I try to stay away from people that will cause me to suffer just because they're suffering because I don't have a problem suffering with people I don't feel bad about it afterwards if you're gonna be shitty to me I can be shitty to you if you're gonna come at me in a state of ignorance I'm going to treat you like you're ignorant people like to suspend their common sense when it benefits them well, what do you mean oh please really if you're going to suspend your common sense and tell me, well, in that particular instance, I'm an idiot. Well, then you're an idiot in every instance. That's a fact. That's just how I'm going to treat you. And now you've just become a negative part of my environment. And the only way to get around that negative part of my environment is to not have that part of my environment. And so now you're no longer a part of my environment. And now the only factors in my environment I have to deal with as like I said the scenery the visual representation of it which the visual representation of it has never to me been a setback but it doesn't mean I don't see it in others it doesn't mean that because they grew up in this mindset they're gonna do to me what was done to them you know you're never gonna do any better than this you might as well just get used to it and granted, I said that, well, don't even bother. I, I don't mean, hey, don't try and talk them into saying, you know, see it my way for a second. There's a lot of potential here. And if we can't do it here, we can at least go out, better ourselves, and maybe bring some of that back. I mean, by all means, help someone. Try and get them to come with you. But what you'll find is it's not the scenery. It's the people they chose to choose to be around. And you'll see that a lot of people are so locked in to their environment, which is the, the people aspect of their environment, like friends they've had for their whole lives, family members. And a lot of people's view on family is, I'm not going to take your word over my family. Even though I know my family's wrong, I'm going to stick with my family. That's 90% of the population today as we know it. Probably even 95% of the population will stay on the plane even though it's spiraling down at a high velocity to everyone's detriment everyone's gonna die when this plane hits and you're like come on jump there's enough parachutes for everybody jump and they're like I know they're wrong but I'm not gonna leave my family it's family I'm jumping I am jumping this plane's gonna crash I'm <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm jumping for it <laughs> <laughs> because a negative part of your environment is still a negative part of your environment and if you feel like you have to compromise your own principles your own integrity if you feel like you have to compromise who you are as a person like suspend your common sense to stick up for or dig in with your family or your friends maybe you should give it a second thought maybe you should be jumping out of that plane maybe you should be running to the hills where it's a little bit safer and I'm not saying that the slums is evil and being in the slums that's a detriment it's not the slums it's the mindset that being in the slums creates it's like and it's very contagious because living in the slums not only has a visual and mental effect it also has an emotional effect because you know that you're just a, a flat tire a broken bone away from being homeless because flat tire you could lose your job broken bone you lose your job these things you lose your job you end up homeless or if you can't go out and hustle you're not going to be able to pay your rent
and you become homeless. So now there's the emotional toll along with the mental toll. The, immense, the, the mental one's easier to get around. But if you can get around that, the emotional toll, the, the two complement one another. So once one of these centers figures out that, okay, I'm in control of this, I'm in control of my perception of this, once one figures that out, the other one kind of falls into place. Okay, so now you've alleviated yourself from this, uh, what do I want to say, this excuse for not ever leaving square one. Now you're taking full responsibility for your journey and now you're, I got to try something. And then you go out and you try it. And if it's family members holding you back, go out and try it anyway. If it's friends holding you back, Go out and try it anyway. Offer them to come with you. You know, it'd be easier in a group if we were all headed to square two. It'd be much easier. Oh, no, no. We're cool right here. We like the way things are running. We like having what we have and in the mean, and we, we like the means by which we achieve our ends. We, in other words, they like the survival game, and they like being at the bracket they're in within that survival game. I want more out of life, so I'm going to go elsewhere. I don't want to live in a perpetual state of survival, fight or flight. Anyway, <laughs> so this video has been about the environment, the immediate environment that affects your mental and emotional state and helps you decide what you're going to do with your life. And I like the video. I could have went on. I might make a part two to this down the road, but uh, it's getting on past the 30 minute mark. So <laughs> going to go ahead and call it. Oh, I, I do like this video. Like I said, I could have went kept going probably for a full hour but if I if I cut it off now that's another half hour <laughs> and another half hour probably uh, anyway ooh, ooh, excuse me uh, if you like the video please click the like button if ooh, excuse me again <laughs> you go ahead and leave comments down below as this is supposed to be a discussion tell me how you feel if you've experienced it the way I, I the way I've explained it or the way I have experienced it and let's have a discussion enlightened what do they call it <laughs> enlightened discourse <laughs> but if you'd like to keep coming back and getting more information or you just like the sound of my voice go ahead and hit the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there.